How to get unstuck, how to change your life. I got Jennifer Ho here with, we would love doing this, unstuck, the fists of getting out of your own way. I mean, honestly, what else is there? Getting out of your own way. This book is incredible. Jennifer, welcome to the show. Thank you. And I've been so looking forward to speaking with you. So first of all, in the book, the piece that's really stuck with me, guys, it's a really, it goes really deep in the physics and the metaphysics and where we are and, mm -hmm. and getting out of our own way. But what so really landed with me was when you had stated in here that we're in our highest energy when we're in our creative energy and mm -hmm. getting in that, that yeah. has not left me since the time that I've read that with your book. So tell us about the book. Tell us about where people get to go with it. And what made you put this out in the world? Sure. Well, first of all, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for all your kind words. The second piece I just want to address is, yeah, you're either in creativity, you're either creating moving forward or you're actually being counterproductive to expanding and to let, you know, literally the feeling of creating moving forward is the feeling of being in alignment with how life works. So when you're not creating, when you're trying to get it to stand still or control it, or you're trying to make sure that it looks the same that it did last year and nothing changes, or that thing that happened when you're 15 years old never happens again. Um, when we start looking at life that way, that is not a creative way to approach your life. And all of a sudden it takes you out of alignment. And that's why we start feeling disease and all sorts of issues. So I love that you picked up on that particular piece because it's such a simple, such a simple concept. You're either creating or you're basically resisting the flow of life. And that will beget all sorts of health issues and all sorts of other things. Like life will not be easy if you do that. So, um, so I love that you said that and yeah, go ahead. So the, it's all about energy and frequencies. Yeah. It, it well, from, you know, it's interesting. You, if you had asked me about that when I was younger, you know, I was a pretty straight laced, you know, didn't, never got in trouble kind of person. The reason was that, uh, I had a really tough dad and, uh, my tough dad, um, my response to having a tough dad was not to rebel is like, okay, okay. How I get your love is I do everything right. So I ran around trying to figure out what doing it right meant. And then I became a perfectionist so I wouldn't get in trouble. And, uh, you know, that, that was my life. And then I realized there's trying to get it right and trying to get approval and trying to be everything for everyone. And there's actually thriving, <laughs> you know, and thriving is being yourself and not really giving a rip what other people think and shining your light and being who you came here to be. And, you know, following that heart's calling, which, you know, the interesting thing is it might've taken, I don't know, four or five years for my dad to come around, even in my adult life. Um, and, and my dad is so proud of me and he, you know, it's just like a win, 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 right? Cause there's me doing what I love and my dad's come back around and, you know, and my mom was always a fan. And so, yeah, so, so it's just, it's just really interesting how it all happens. And when you say it's all about frequency and energy, it's really all about, honestly, if we were to put it in real layman's terms, it's about your, it's about being responsible 100% for your mood, for the, for the, the emotional response you have to life. And if you can do the things necessary in order to get yourself to the frequency or let's say the motionality of the frequency of 
of this expansive, delicious, you know, if you look out in nature, it's beautiful. Imagine that it has a certain frequency. I mean, it gives off photons and actually does have a frequency. Imagine that you could get into the frequency of that and the way your life worked was in the same flow that nature works. Whether you like what's happening in nature or not is one thing, but it's always in flow. It's never not in flow. So imagine that you actually got yourself to that same vibe of um, facing forward in a in a, in a in a certain state of being. It would put you on the radio station of all things good, and then what you would hear would be all things fluid, all things that would make your life work. Blah blah blah, like that. So you're you're talking about fourth level responsibility that we're absolutely responsible for everything that that is in in our life and where we are and, and exactly where we're meant to be. Yeah, and a lot of people hear that like blame the victim, right? So I've had all this crappy stuff happening to me, and so thanks for letting me know that I'm responsible for all this crappy crap that's happened, and uh, don't want to listen to the interview anymore. And I'm like, no, 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 no. What it is, it how could you be responsible for horrible stuff when you didn't even know about? You didn't know that life matches where you focus. You didn't know that. You didn't know that you could embody a whole other state of being that actually become, you become the, attra instead of using law of attraction, you just experience yourself as the attractor itself. And if we don't know that, and we have no clue that that's the way it is, you would never deliberately uh, be magnetic to crappy stuff. Why would you do that? So it's not blame the victim, but once you know, you can't unknow it, right? Once you understand how physics works, you can't unknow that stuff. But it's it's the freedom. Yeah. When you're absolutely responsible, the freedom is open then to allow it, the surrender and allow it. Yeah, well, and the thing is, when you fully embodied how, you know, without reading the book, I, I want to make sure that you I get to read the book. The book yeah, is because well, well, really, really there's one thing is using intention and trying to be in a good mood. And these are all things that you can learn from any, anybody. For me, it's not a bit, I, I was like, screw having to control my thoughts the rest of my life. Like, oh my God, that is so exhausting. I thought to myself, there's got to be a way to actually transcend needing to like think about what I'm thinking and to, you know, think about what I'm eating and think about da, 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 da. Like, it just seemed like a big control fest. Like I've got to think about all these things. I just want to understand what it takes to embody because there's certain people that just, I knew it back then too. People just have this way of being that is just magnetic to great stuff. And I'm yeah. like, how do, I don't care. Don't tell me about, don't tell me how to do it. Don't I, tell want me about that. Right, I, I want that. I want that. I want the state <laughs> of embodiment. So then I went out about on my journey and I'm like, I want to teach people how to embody that state of being. Because if you embody that state of being, you don't have to use all the tools. You could just be there all the time. <laughs> right and that yeah. that's where I, i'm like the efficient I, I think i even wrote that in the book i'm like the efficiency queen like i don't want to have to work so hard I, and it can't be that if i'm a divine child of an infinite universe with stars and planets and you know suns exploding and spirals happening everywhere and all that stuff it cannot be that i have to work this hard if that amount of wisdom decided that I was a good idea and you were a good idea and everyone listening was a good idea. It can't be that much work. Infinite wisdom would have to, you know, it thought I was a good idea in 3D and here I am, right? <laughs> so- And the odds of that are astronomical that you're actually recreated and sitting here. Yeah, exactly. Okay. And whoever's listening right now is listening right now. You know, we, we co-conspired to come together because- you know, people don't, there's been so much crap that's gone on in the world. I'm using the word crap a lot today. It's been so, because I don't want to say the S word. Um, there's been so much crap that's gone on in this world right now. There's so much polarity. 
imagine that we could just embody a different state of being and it wouldn't matter what was going on in the world. Not that you would ignore it. In fact, what you would do is you'd feel more empowered and you would feel like there are things you can really do because you don't get taken out by it. So instead of being like, oh, I'm just going to put my head in the sand and ignore what's happening, you'd actually be up for, geez, what can I do? Like, how can I now that I've gotten this state and I keep evolving this state, how much power do I actually have? So you you don't feel like you want to ignore it. You feel like, oh, I can, I am all chemical. I am magical. So what can I do with this planet on this earth? So with, with the, that, 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 that piece there, right? Yeah. And by the way, you're fun. You're fun. We, we, we've been we've been getting to do this for so long now. I wish we, we I'm, I'm so glad we're here. <laughs> anyway, um, the uh, that the plant people are hurting, right? Yes. Mother Nature's angry. The planet's yes. angry. Everybody's angry. Everyone's that the, the to be able to tap in and say, oh, that. That I am able to, and I want to say just filter into higher frequencies. We know what that means. We know what it feels like. But that, how would you, for someone that is, is not even practicing, or those that are practicing, ooh, how would you bring them just a little, like putting the toe in the water to say, yeah. here's an easier, better way? Yeah. Yeah. So, um well, first of all, there is an easier, better way, but we've got to, so the, the place you begin is you begin by identifying, so there's a doorway where we go and do personal development courses, or we go in to a therapist, or we go, and all of those things are great. I did all of them, okay, which is what got me to, okay, there's got to be a different way. That way of approaching things is, I'm a little bit broken and I need fixing and I need to be able to survive really well. I need to be able to be, you know, at least with this much in my bank, at least this degree of happiness, blah, 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 blah. That way of thinking is survival-based thinking. So the way, way we all start is we understand that there's an entirely different paradigm called thriving-based ways of being. And this was my aha. And I thought, oh, and then I thought, oh, it's an operating system. It's a way, it's actually the way we operate. So most people, because they've been indoctrinated into a dog eat dog world where everyone's got to get theirs, most people are in survival, but they don't realize that way up here, you don't even have to play this game anymore. So if I open the doorway, that would be the place to begin. So to open that doorway, we would say, Imagine that, now for some, this will be a big leap, so I'm trying to keep it small enough that everyone can kind of get it. The laws of physics, okay? And I'm not talking, you know, university level physics. I'm saying literally the smallest particles of you, there are laws to those particles. And the laws to those particles say that, uh, they exemplify in the universe and we're made of particles of the universe. So in the universe, the way those particles operate is they're constantly creating upon what was. Planets are crashing into each other, or suns or moons are crashing in. New things are being, comets are hitting things. New planets are being created, probably some even with life. You know, there are hundreds of billions of systems, solar systems. So there are laws that cause everything to work right down to the smallest particle. So, and waveform and quarks, and there's all sorts of particles. Well, we're made of those. And in survival, we operate in 3D. And in 3D, those smallest particles are not the, in the forefront. They're in the background. But since the laws of those particles govern everything, I mean, everything, liquids, gases, like solids, everything. If we can understand how those laws work, we can bypass the struggle in 3D because now we're talking about operating from the most basic part of us. And 
what happens as you start to follow those laws is your life starts to get much easier because you're not operating from the density of 3D. You're operating from the most basic particle. And if you can understand, you know, I went from pushing my career, making it hard, getting really sick and almost dying five times, you know, so many things happened because I was living a 3D life. As soon as I understood those laws, and it's not law of attraction, it's way beyond that. These are foundational laws about who we are, why we're here. When you start to understand those, like everything literally is happening so you can create, which you alluded to at the beginning, everything is happening for you to be able to create. Once you slip on to that, that way of operating, just that one that you picked up on. The door opens. Just one thing. You're here to create. Now, there's tons of other things to know because the thriving operating system isn't just about that. But the thriving operating system is not based on your broken and your need fixing. If you're a creator, by definition, we're just touching on one of the laws of thriving. In the book, I talk about five. But that one law if it's all based on creating, that means nothing is ever wrong, including you, because you'd have to have things be necessarily imperfect because the imperfection catalyzes the ideas that cause, catalyze the ideas that cause you to create right. and you're a creator. So built into the fabric of life itself is that everything is imperfect. So I'm sorry for all the recovering or the perfectionists. I'm in like a recovered perfectionist, but that's another reason why I used to get migraines, right? Constantly trying to control things to keep them perfect. So as soon as you realize that this isn't a world made on perfection, it's deliberately made on imperfection so that we can continue to create because that's who we are. So, so all of a sudden, here. right? And so if that's why we're here, then you stop judging what you perceive isn't working or what you're getting wrong. You just start going, oh, I wonder what this contrast is causing me to, is catalyzing or whatever. And it's just an op, it's one part. It's just, that's just one thing in that operating system. And it's powerful. You're fabulous. I'm just, I'm leaning in. And I'm normally, I'm just leaning in on this one. I'm taking it all in. I'm ready to pack my bags and go where you're going. You are just incredible. The book is, it's so, I don't want to scare people and say it's deep, but it ain't, no, that I'm taking the butt out, right? Because that, that work can come out and anything. Yeah. So I love that. The book is so, it's easy to understand, but it's deep in this, it, it's satisfying. That's how it's deep. Yeah. Yeah. And, and look at, I mean, look at the first question I ask and like the, you know, it's this question, what's the most fulfilling, like in chapter one, what's the most fulfilling thing that you can do with your life with the least amount of effort, with the greatest utilization of the skills you were born with that would leave you inspired and have you excited to get up in the morning? If you can answer that question, and spend the rest of your life unfolding what the answer is, guess what? What happens is you start moving into the thriving operating system. So, so think of all the time we spend trying to analyze ourselves, excavate ourselves, figure out what's wrong with us, take course after course going, oh, I had such a break. You know, not that the breakthroughs are wrong. They're, they're great. We have, they're, you can they're imagine there's tons right. of breakthroughs in our work too, but but the focus in our work is not on the breakthrough because you're broken. It's on the how do you operate in thriving and then all the ways that aren't that come up in a matter of course in the process. And you can transcend like from the energy of thriving, you could get rid of hundreds of beliefs at a time instead of having to work your little butt off to just have one or two, you know, ahas during a program, right? You could just release that. So you, I mean, why do we do those programs in the first place? So we could thrive, right? Well, so why don't we just teach you about embodying thriving, which is your natural state. And then what you'll see is all the stuff that has you not be there. And so many, so much of it just drops away. You know what I mean? We've been indoctrinated into the idea that you have to excavate and shovel out all the crap. And it's so arduous. And I was so tired of it. 
if you know what I mean. Just tired. Yeah. Yeah. Because I'm type A. So I did it really diligently. You no, know, I like went at myself. Okay. Hey, so analyze the controllers in there. I could hear that both there. The controls strong in you. I love it. Yeah. Because uh, you're busy. So people, it, this has been, I did this review and the into months and months and months, I'm going to say it may even have been a year ago. It's been very difficult to get this woman on the show. And wow. So, and I love the book. So what are you up to? What do you do with your life? Because you had me at the book. Aw. So what do I do with my life? <laughs> Gosh. Um, well, I live in the mountains of Asheville, North Carolina, and I love it. For fun, I go hiking in the Wide Awakening, our company. We teach courses on the, we don't teach courses. We bring people on the experience of embodying the thriving operating system so they can get to that ease, ease and flow. And my belief is this, listen, what I do with my days is I look for ever more efficient and productive ways to help people to live what their heart is calling them to. And it doesn't matter if you have a heart's calling like Gandhi, or if you have a heart's calling just for your kids and your family, right? It's all equally valuable. And the reason for me, why that pervades every part of my life, you know, when I'm hiking, I'm just, I'm constantly looking to the beauty. I love talking to people on the trails and sometimes I need my me time too, but I love, you know, this stuff is so powerful. The reason why I cannot, why it's so pervasive, I guess, why it's calling me so profoundly is because probably like most of your listeners, we feel like there's something we can do about the polarity and the misunderstandings between all of us. We feel, I feel it. I feel like most people are not like the people arguing on TV. I feel like most people know that we're kind of more alike than we are different. I feel like most people know that if we focused on the things that actually matter, the things that people tell us matter wouldn't matter so much. And all of a sudden we'd be co-creating a different world. But in order to operate that way, which is the thriving operating system, in order to get to the place where in your life you can feel the abundance of it all, when you're in that level of overflow that this operating system provides, you don't want to go to war with anyone. Why would you do that? You're already in overflow. You don't need someone else to approve of you. You're already loving your life. Why would someone else's approval add to that? All of a sudden you become a net contributor. And when you get a bunch of people who are thriving together, you can create whatever the hell kind of world you want. And so the ultimate job of our work is to make the biggest difference on this planet. You know, even right now we're, we're I can't say much about it, but we're, we're creating a project that will actually change the world. And it's a philanthropic venture that I'm on that is from asking the question at the beginning of the book, right? So, but if everyone lived this way, we'd all be wondering, like, what can I do now that I'm not trying to control my life or perpetually trying to feel safe? What am I going to do with my energy? So, and I, you know, I have an overflow of abundance. What am I going to do with this? It's why that picture is always in every, you know, in every recording of mine. Because really, that's how it feels. It's just most of the world isn't living that way. Hey, I'm just stacking my bag. <laughs> so, and the piece with the creating, why that resonated with me was it was like, whoa. I was the full ground there up I go and, and, and it all that, that was the, the, the flow, whatever the abundance and that just right, right. It, it so, feels like I put words to something you already knew somehow. 
Yes. That's what yeah, I feel absolutely. like as, as I'm looking at your energy, it's kind of why you're going speechless a bit sometimes because, because it's, it's sort of like, wow, I didn't even know, you know, how did I not find this? <laughs> you know? And, and I want you to know that your experience is a lot of people's experience of our work. It's like, dang, this is, this is like next level, <laughs> you know? And it is, but, but I don't like, again, keep in mind what my intent of this work is. It's like, if we could all be in that state, Imagine what a great what, world it will right? be. Right? Like, oh, who doesn't yeah. want, right. Who doesn't want that world? So, yeah. so, and, you know, I remember, I can't remember if I wrote this in the book. I don't know. When I was 17 years old, I was standing behind my dad and he was watching the news and it was like a Palestinian Israeli war, you know, 30 years ago when I was younger, yeah. whenever that was 40 years ago, it's whatever. It's still it going on. I know. So I'm what he's watching it and I'm watching it and I'm thinking in my little cute little 17 year old, you know, brain, like, why don't they just talk to, I don't understand. Why don't they just talk to each other as fellow human beings? You know, I didn't know the history. I didn't know all that kind of stuff, but I just knew that if somehow they could get to that level of vulnerability or being able to see each other, you could literally solve anything. Now, my dad turned around and probably said what a lot of people are thinking right now. He said, Basically, Jennifer, pull your head out of your butt because that is not the way the world works and you don't understand and you'll get it, you know, once you've lived a little, you'll get how it works and you'll just kind of ride the same train as everybody else like me. Like you'll just, you'll just get in line, you know, and be just like the rest of us, like, you know, sheep. I, I'm seeing a Pink Floyd video right now as they're lining up. Another brick in the wall. So, <laughs> and so I just decided not to be a brick in the wall. And I decided in that moment, I, I didn't say anything to my dad, but I now get this. You know, I'm 17 at the time. My dad's, what does that make him? 42 or something like that, 45. And I'm thinking as a 17 year old, I'm thinking you're wrong. I, and it wasn't a rebellious 17 year old because you already know I wasn't rebellious. It was more like a cellular knowing you are not correct. That is not true. It can be done and we can transcend the political powers and all the stuff we're told in media. We literally in our hearts know what the truth is. Imagine if we all came together and we all operated from that place. So our work is, like I said, I cannot say enough about you change people in the way they operate and you change the world. And so, you know, I, that story, I never thought it would be something that I would, you know, years later talk about, you know, cause, cause I, I, you know, was just 17 year old standing behind her dad for me at the time, you know, while he's watching TV and I just, blurted out something and he told me I was wrong. You know, I never thought I'd remember that, but it was actually a pretty formative moment. And uh, how many of us at five years old looked up at our, not 17, but at five, when you really have that knowing and that connection, looked at our parents and looked at the people around us and said, you crazy. I mean, you are crazy. You people, like, what are you doing? You're not even telling the truth. You know, these days, five-year-olds are actually saying it. You know, they're in the back seat in the car going, <laughs> mommy, that's not what you said. You know, they're actually saying that stuff. I mean, back, back when I was a little girl, I mean, you weren't supposed to say that. So, but these days, man, these kids are so wired for what's next that they just have amazing BS meters. Yeah. So, okay. So the... The BS, like the, the, the piles, are, there's a lot of piles, okay, mm -hmm. We're in oh, the yeah. world right now. Yes, very spelling. And you have the youth looking at us like there's a whole bunch of piles of manure. And I want yeah. to say bullshit, okay? Uh, I, I, I know, because it, it, it is. It is. I'm New York. I, I get a card that says I can curse. And it's, yeah, anyway. It comes with the accent. I, I don't have an accent. Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
they're sitting there, right? And they're frustrated, which but then we're going to lower energies and this, and they're like, and you're screwing this whole thing up yeah. and, and you're not even letting us. So what do you say to them? What I say is, and I am not even kidding you. Yesterday, I hop on my bike for a bike ride. I go five minutes, I swear to you, five minutes up my road. I turn to the left. I, I put the whole story on social media. I turn to the left and remember hurricanes coming. Okay. So I, I turn to the left and I'm going, what now? What's going on there? And what I see is a cow mommy giving birth to a cow baby in the middle of piles of poop, right? Because it's a field full of cows. And I get to witness this incredible miracle. I ran, I, I rode my bike so fast. I got my phone because I'd forgotten it. And then I rode my bike so fast back to catch some video of it. And this little calf is born and the mommy's licking and he's trying to get up and you see it on TV. But when you're looking at it in real life, it's like, oh my God, so amazing. <laughs> and so this is life. There are fields of poop, literal BS. <laughs> And in, the, and in the middle of the BS is actually stuff being birthed right in front of your eyes. And your choice is to either participate, you know, Buckminster Fuller basically said, you know, you don't try to go back and fix what's broken. Create something new that everyone can align with and create it so powerfully. Who doesn't want to align with the little calf wibble wobbling its way trying to walk with like the mommy licking it and like I stand there for a half an hour and by the half an hour time is over this thing is walking up to its mom it's so amazing so it's not like life has to bring that to you you can cause those moments and the bs is meant to be a catalyst it's meant to be a catalyst for the clarity of what you can do I had neighbors coming up to me that I had never talked to, one of whom even I knew was judging my husband and I for whatever reason, they live across the way. She was just like laughing. We were having a great time. We were cracking jokes. Why? Because we were focused on something that was bigger than both of us, like the miracle of birth. And the question now becomes, instead of going, how can we fix this brokenness and how can I get that person to believe what I believe? Instead, start thinking in terms of what are the things that I can focus on and talk about that everyone would want to participate in? Or, you know, St. Saint Francis said, you know, and, you know, basically, I'm paraphrasing, basically, instead of trying to tell everyone what you think, listen more, you know, seek to be, seek to understand instead of to be understood. And, you know, as we were sitting there understanding what was going on, it was amazing what happened to relationships and all sorts of stuff. So again, simplifying the living daylights out of something that is a long-term focus. But what the hell else do we have? Extinct the human race? You know, wipe out mother nature? You know, <laughs> either... We start, I mean, those are the choices. Keep going the way we're going and in our righteousness and in our just butting heads or deliberately, consciously start focusing on what we can do, period. End of story. I mean, those are the choices and you're either part of the solution or you're part of the problem. And if you're running around arguing with people, you're still part of the problem because you're giving energy to the problem. It changes nothing. I have never seen, have you ever seen someone on Facebook ever, ever? Have you ever seen someone on Facebook ever convince anyone else that their point of view is right ever in a comment thread, even once? Nope. Nope. Me neither. Nope. Yeah. But we're talking on screen. Everybody unstuck. That's it, Jennifer Ho. I'm a fan. I can't, I'm coming to visit you in North Carolina, hang out in the mountains. You'll be yes, seeing you, Maureen. More. You are fabulous. Thank you, my love. Thank you so much. Thank you. Well, 
you know, let's split, spread some of that is what I have to say. Like, let's infect people with a different kind of thing. Everybody again, Jennifer, unstuck. That's it. You can't forget that. Get unstuck, get in the universe, and let's get this party started. Yay. All right. Bye, everybody. Bye.